Okay, hey everybody, it's Thursday. Uh, we are knocking out Mumra for uh, today's show. I'm going to be doing, uh, let's see, uh, going to be posting on the page here in just a second so everybody can join in and see this. And uh, bear with me. And as you may be able to see there, there's a couple of details, or maybe not. Uh, right there at the top, there's a couple of details on this one. Uh, it's a dual card set, it looks like, right? Well, uh, the fun part about that is I have decided to do something very special because it's Mum Raw for everybody, and I'm going to double it out. So, I mean, it's not a, a great superpose of him uh, monstered out, but at least you can see that, right? Um, I'm going to do at least this one today due to time constraints. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do them both right now, but I'm going to do the best I can. Um, as we get into this, I'm going to be doing it right here. So I'm going to knock this out and uh, see how it turns out. Hopefully I'll be able to get both of them in there uh, in a timely manner and not have to run over because if it's going to take like, you know, two and a half hours to do it, then I'm not going to be able to do that. But um, I'm surely going to try for you. This one is a little more ambitious even than my Juggernaut was um, because of the fact of the detailing in it and all of that. And uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Not to mention the fact that how well Facebook holds up because uh, we've been getting kicked out today um, off and on. And it's due to the fact that we're using so much bandwidth on everything. So um, anyway, like I said, I'm going to try and get this one knocked out. And uh, if not, I may come back later and uh, do another session and finish it up. But for right now, we're keeping our fingers crossed and knocking this bad boy out. Now, as you know, Mumra... <coughs> I choked on my legends. <laughs> there we go. Live broadcasting. Um, anyway, yes, I am going to survive. Uh, crap happens. What can I say? Um... Mumra is the villain in this series, and uh, he is the ultimate villain from uh, these cartoons of the 80s, and he still holds up even to today, as you know, from the uh, 2011 um, reboot of the Thundercats series. He held up the same way. Um, this is one of the best villains in animation. And this dude is freaking phenomenal. Um, I love drawing this character. And uh, it's been probably, oh, good Lord, 25 years since I've drawn him last. So <clears throat> that's part of the problem uh, with it taking so long because of the fact that I put so much detail into it for um, the sake of everybody watching and making sure this one really stands out and does it justice. So... Um, what I've got here is I'm starting out with a four card set and uh, like I said the uh, juggernaut that I did previously which I don't know if you guys all got to see that or not because I didn't have the page up at the time I was doing them uh, privately and I don't know if you guys got to see that I'll have to post it and make sure that everybody gets to um, I'm already getting some private messages on it over here uh, just to just to say Hey, man, we didn't see that. Um, so I'll have to be sure and post that video for you. But this character here is a four-card set because of the fact that I didn't want to go six and go too big and uh, totally blow it out of the water. So I wanted to keep it realistic for what we're doing on the card set so that everybody doesn't have to sit around for you know a couple of hours and watch me draw. I know people have lives, and I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and whatnot, but I don't want to keep you to the point to where, you know, relatives come knocking on doors and say, hey, what are you doing in there? You know, I'm just watching Brad draw Mumra. Yeah, right. So, uh, got this going on, and he's coming across pretty quick. Um, he has a very, uh, I want to say Simeon style face. Um, for lack of a better term, because that's the way it looks. I mean, he almost has an ape 
type of look when he's drawn up like this because of the fact of this low, low lip. And he has a, a weird mummy overbite going on. I'm going to get these teeth in here real funky and uh, small-like. Because it's almost like he, he's got a chimpanzee or, um, you know, some kind of ape type of face. And it's not, there, there's not any reference <laughs> for that um, in humanoid type people. I mean, I actually had to pull up some reference on the series and then I had to pull up reference on um, actual apes so that I could get that mouth to look right because it doesn't look humanoid. Um, it holds up once he, once he's all together, but... Man, that, that heavy simian brow, you know, the almost um, a Neanderthal type in the way that the, the brow cuts and uh, the heavy ridges. And then the jaw cuts down, and it, like I said, it just looks weird. Um, but anyway, that's, that's part of his characteristics and part of what makes him such a, a vicious-looking entity within himself. Um the dude's just crazy looking. And a lot of people don't like drawing him because of the fact that he is so hard and so intense to draw. But I really, really have fun with these things. Um, I, I just don't limit myself. That's why I started doing this originally was because of the fact that I do these types of characters and cards to push myself. So that was the main reason I got into doing this. Let me pull the camera down here so you guys can see where I'm at and make sure everything's on here. Hey, Matt, how's it going, man? Ancient spurts of evil. Dude. <laughs> That's because it sounds like what he says. <laughs> making fun of his, his speech pattern. That's funny. Now, you guys um, may recognize this form because it is the form from the cartoon. If you don't know what's going on, that is where he's holding up his hands right before he starts chanting, and that's what Matt was making fun of. Um, I know you guys can't see the, the comments and stuff, but... Uh, he called on the ancient spirits of evil and uh, requested that they change the decayed form into Mumra, the ever-living. And that was the way it went. And this dude is extremely creepy. Let's see what's going on here. Going to knock this all out. I know I'm going back and forth really quick on this face here, but uh, I'm cutting in the details because I didn't put them all in when I sketched it out so that I wouldn't overwork it. But then um, now that it's all in here, I need to go ahead and cut all this in and draw it out and make him look all mummified and creepy and whatnot. And I had someone tell me, you know, the other day that uh, my animated style wouldn't hold up in black and white and I'm like okay cool and then I went in and inked like 30 cards and caught them all up from from the series and you know where I skipped around and whatnot and they all look great and I'm going to be posting them tomorrow so um, I have like five more to do before they're all caught up so I did not realize I was that far behind because I've been getting asked and I was like okay cool I'll, I'll get on that I'm, I'm on it and I've been doing a couple a day and you know I was just like, geez, I'm over a third of the series behind here because we're only on. This is only um, 136 of the series. So, um, you know, because I did two, uh, I did two cards together on the uh, Wiley Cat and Wiley Kit, and uh, I did two. Uh, I doubled up two on the uh, Archangel when I did that. So, um, that balanced us out. And now this one's going to be a double. 
So that's going to help too. Um, but it'll count as one because it's going to be a massive, massive card. And I'm really digging it. But uh, yeah, I've been catching stuff up this week and uh, getting a lot of these cards done because I was doing them every day and then I got caught up doing the web series and prepping that for you guys and doing everything else as well with the um, upcoming comics and whatnot. And I just got behind and I apologize on that because I've been finishing up commissions all week to get them out the door so that uh, everybody held up with what they were supposed to get. And uh, everybody was happy. So if you haven't gotten your commission mailed out to you, it will be out this weekend. Just hang tight um, because, like I said, I'm running a little behind. And I'm not tr trying to make excuses or anything like that. I'm just saying flat out, I apologize. I'm behind, and I will catch up and take care of it. Um, I have a couple of cancer covers to finish up, which are sitting here on my desk to the side. And uh, they aren't inked yet because I wanted to get these cards caught up first. But... Uh, yeah, that's where we're going. So. And I cut right into that bandage right there. And was going to finish it and didn't. There we go. That way it comes up there and finishes. Hello. Now, the funny thing is, if you go watch the cartoon, uh, Mumra has a skull brooch right here holding his cave together. That's weird. Um, it's like, I got it from my grandma. <laughs> so it, it's strange um, I never noticed it until I uh, knock this out and I'm detail oriented as I'll get out because I think it's just part of it um, you know if you're going to draw it you got to put in the details and make it all work and it just I just found it highly humorous that he had that little clip and it looks like a skull on uh um, on his shroud. And you can find 5,000 different images of these um, online. To take a look at and see the pose over and over and over and over and over. This is just the one that I personally liked the most and wanted to see because the most popular one drawn by uh, other other artists that weren't associated with the show itself the most popular fan art one is to draw him as this form you know the the monster form but if they go in and do it um, for the mummified version everybody always draws either one of two positions this one or they draw the one where he throws his arm out to the side, the right arm, where he starts to transform and the bandages spin off of him. Everybody seems to dig that one really, really well. And uh, it just cracks me up to no end to watch uh, other artists draw these things because that's the way they come out each and every time. And it's, it, you know, every time I hear Mumra, it's just one of these things. And I fell right into it. And I was like, I'm going to do something different and unique. And next thing I know, it's this one that attracted me the most, so I was like, that's what you guys are getting. So, hey, Javon, glad you made it on. Thank you very much for stopping by. But, um, yeah, this one is just one of those characters that you just get hooked into. And you can hear the voice in your head. You, can, you become a five-year-old all over again. And it's just, you know, come on. You got to say it which I'm not going to, but, uh, you know, you bust out in the yell and get stupid with it. And it's all in good fun. That cartoon definitely resonated to, with people in a different way. And, um, you know, He-Man, same thing. When it came on, kids would always um, just do that. And, it, you know, they would yell out the, the catchphrase and all that. And one funny thing was is when I was little, um, nobody of my friends, none of my friends ever wanted to be a Thundercat. They always, when we would play on the school ground, you know, and whatnot, it was always funny because they would never want to play and be, uh, 
the Thundercats, they always wanted to be, you know, Mumra or, you know, one of the bad guys, that kind of thing. And um, they just had the best villains. And as a 10-year-old, yes, everybody does it. I am not immune to that. I had all the action figures and all that mess when I was younger. And um, I don't have them anymore, unfortunately. But, you know, you grow up, interests change, and then you spend your adult life trying to rekindle uh, that childhood and end up hunting for them on the Internet. <laughs> so... I know these look disjointed, but uh, it turns out Mumra is an alien, not human. So um, I thought he was a mummy for, uh, mystic from Egypt, but it turned out later on we found out that he was actually uh, stranded on Earth just like the Thundercats, which was strange, but whatever. That wasn't the storyline that I got when I was 10, but it is what it is. So... And it actually makes it a little cooler when you think about it. Because then he's just as foreign as the rest of them. And uh, it shows better as in how he took over and whatnot. So. Well, whatever. Because they never really say either way. It's just in this new one, they've said that he's a an ancient entity that landed on the planet. And he's foreign to Third Earth just like the Thundercats are. So. Whatever, man. It works out. As long as I don't choke on my uh, my throat drop here, we'll be okay. We'll try to keep that just restricted to one time a day. So, um... <laughs> Jeez. Oh, well. It actually cracks me up more than anything because I uh, only put these in when I'm going to have a meeting or when I'm going to be, you know, talking a lot. And I know I talk a lot on these things. And uh, it's one of those things where it just bites me once in a while. That'll look good in the video. So that'll probably be a meme or a a short take somewhere. <laughs> All right. Cutting into this thing here and getting this creepy freaking hand out of the way. There we go. Now I'll refine this a little bit more as we go along, but I, like I said, I want to move through so that we can at least get him done. At least to this half for this episode of the Daily Card. So, like I said, I might have to come back and redo, you know, another one later on. And, um, thank you guys, by the way, uh, see, thanks, Matt. Matt just actually pointed out that the, um, the inhabitants of Third Earth were, were actually turning out to be Mumra's, I don't want to say actually 5,000 times, um, turning out to be Mumra's, um, alien army running around trying to find mystic weapons and things like that and um, conquer for him. So uh, that helps a lot because he was a mystic. They, I, he would send people out and things out and um, destroy planets that were a threat to him. So that make per makes perfect sense. Really, it really it does. But um, thanks very much for that. And um, like I was going to say right before that, though, uh, thank you guys very much. Um, I'm not sure if folks, uh, if, um, folks know that or not. Uh, a lot of my friends do, and I appreciate it more than you know. Um, I'm not sure if Facebook posted it or not, but tomorrow is my birthday. 
and uh, I've been talking about it off and on here in the last couple of days and whatnot. But uh, thank you very much for that. I've been getting all kinds of you know early birthday wishes and stuff because it's the weekend and whatnot, and I'm sure that uh, I'll get a lot more between now and and the show tomorrow. But uh, thank you guys so much for that. I appreciate it. it more than you know. That is just awesome. I am going to be 41 tomorrow. And I'm actually excited. Most people are freaking out about it. You know, my friends, a lot of my old school buddies, they, they freak out about that kind of thing. And I'm just like, man, I'm happy and healthy. And, you know, I'm in the best shape I've been in in years. And, uh, you know, my diabetes aren't giving me is not giving me any trouble and I'm actually um, pushing you know almost almost diet remission with it to where I mean it still spikes once in a while but uh, I'm in such a better place so um, thank you guys very much for that and I'm gonna keep getting better and better with it Unfortunately, I did that to myself a few years ago. Um, well, it's been a, a, more than a few. But uh, I was in law enforcement for a while, and I was working uh, where I was moving every day and still drawing comics when I came home and, you know, staying on point. But uh, we had the day job for insurance purposes and stuff and uh, needed to boost up a little income so I could start my own business, and that's where I'm at today. And... Um, I went from a lot of walking and movement and working out and all that and then just went to sitting at a desk for, you know, 14 hours a day when I started. And I tell you what, it jacked me up. <laughs> I did it to myself. <laughs> it's the infamous curse of uh, regular soda and not realizing that I wasn't gaining massive weight, but I wasn't as healthy as I was when I started. And... Uh, it was crazy there for a while, so I had to get that under control. And I didn't feel good, and I felt funny, and uh, tested on a uh, family member's meter to check it for her, and ended up turning out that I was diabetic. So, it's unfortunate. Stay away from the regular soda, it'll bite you. It has teeth. So, um, anyway, if you hear the giggling in the background, that's my daughter. She's around the corner at her workstation here in my office, and she uh, she busted up. So, but, uh, yeah, we have Mumra coming along here. I'm going to draw this one in first, this side. Now... I'm going to put in these funky bandages and stuff, and I'm not going to go overkill with them. I'm going to keep them kind of simple because I don't want to go all frilly with them and, you know, too outrageous. But uh, I'm going to keep them going across this way, and I think I'm going to cut this one under here. Oh, wait, it's an overlap. But yeah, got to take care of stuff. Okay. I'm going to run this right across here. And a lot of these go sequential. I mean, they go literally right across. And it looks like it's wrapped, but they're aged by wrinkles and straights and uh, then bends and stuff, and <clears throat> I like the way he looks. He's got a tiny little body, though, and a big old freaking head, because what ends up happening is, is you get this second one that comes in behind here like this, <clears throat> and instead of lining it out like I was going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to line it out like this, and then we're going to black that out. That way we don't have to mess with that, because I want it to be spot on for the balance of what's going on with him. So I'm going to cut in this other hand here. Creepy digits. 
And I'm not going to draw in fingernails on him because um, in the original form in the series, he doesn't have fingernails that show up and uh, until he transforms and then they turn into black claws. But um, in this form, he always has these pointy fingers and uh, the thumbs show up. Because they show like that because they're normally dynamic or, you know, more curved and diverse in comparison to the rest of the body. And they always cut over to the side, which is always cool. That's why I did it over there on that thumb too. You see that ridge right there. But um, just going in with the classic Kirby style knuckles. Just clock, 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 clock. Done deal. Draw out the finger ports. Right out of the back of the hand. And draw in these crazy fingers. And like I said, with him being mummified and whatnot, I get to play with it a little more here and uh, make it a little more open. And that's, that's really cool because he doesn't have an exact anatomy that you can follow um, to a T. So you can play with the uh, the creepiness of it and the dynamic of it a lot more. Shade in that palm. Now when I turn this around, it'll look more like a hand, but <clears throat> he's got that creepy thing going on. But like Todd McFarlane always says, you know, when he draws Violator, it cracks me up because he's always said that for years. <clears throat> Who are you to tell me what it looks like? Who are you to tell me about the, the anatomy, you know? Have you ever seen this guy before? Heck, just bust me up when he tells people that. And now, we're going to come down here. I'm going to break out that curve a little bit. For this robe to come down off of this arm. So, come back here off the middle. There we go. Now, when I ink this, I'll have to clean those lines up because I went back and forth. Don't do that when you're drawing. Keep your keep your pencils very clean. Then you don't have to go back and be like me and you know, be be fixing stuff all the time. So, and that ran right into that thumb joint, didn't? I have to swoop that out a little bit. Now, this will be black for the underside of the robe here. So, back and forth, don't swirl, don't swirl, back and forth. Now, when you get to, um, into drawing stuff like this, make sure that you always co contrast and clash with your stuff because um, <clears throat> a big problem that I see with comic artists, it, it, and I had a bad deal with this a couple of years ago, is if you're going to co come out with these big blacks, make sure they contrast throughout because, you know, like here on top of the knuckles, on top of the hand, I'm going to put a little bit of a divot and a shadow. And the reason you want to do that is it lightens it up uh, on top. It gives it a highlight because you're contrasting that solid, that solid bright for that solid shade. And if you don't, it'll get weird on you real quick. Um, it, it'll feel out of balance because you won't have enough solid black throughout i mean he's got it in his hood and stuff but he doesn't have it down here you know up in here he doesn't have that um it's going to be a solid highlight type of thing until i go in and flesh all that out but um to contrast it i'll put folds you know in there in the cape and whatnot but uh initially make sure that you draw those in and plan for that because the big thing now is people that are complaining, I'll tell you, the, the funny thing I read this morning was uh, a couple of people are complaining about how 
modern comic artists can't afford to draw more than one page a day or, you know, maybe two max. And the reason for that is because of the fact that they're claiming now that it's a difference in rendering. They say it's a different difference in detailing, but it, it's actually rendering because they're talking about the difference between boots on Captain America without laces versus combat boots with laces being the problem. And I don't I don't agree with that. I don't I don't agree with that at all. I think that's that falls into into rendering, which is how far you take your drawing. Because I have just as much detail in my work as you do as a realist or a photo realism artist, if that's the case. But it's a different kind of detail. Because what I do is I do the animated style of detail and I have to put in stuff to where it, it forms that in the mind of the reader in comparison to what you're doing with photorealism. And I have nothing against photorealism. I'm actually a fan of it as a fan, but I don't draw that way. Um, so I have to put in way more dynamic um, positions and I have to give... I have to extrapolate the rest of the image to where it'll show up in the person's mind, <clears throat> excuse me, the reader's mind, or else they won't get the image. So, you know, if you're saying that you, that you can't produce because of the fact of your style, which that's where rendering comes from, and how much detail you personally put into something, if you're complaining that that's the reason you're not producing, then you're lying to yourself because that doesn't matter you know, I mean, you may be that slow and have to worry about that. And if you're a slow artist, that's fine. But don't blame you not producing pages on pages at uh, whatever level you're at because of the fact of your rendering, you know, how much detail you put into it. If you're putting that much detail in it, then maybe you either need to get faster or not put so much detail into it. You know, it's that kind of thing. But... Um, They've, they've switched it over to now where it's part of the argument you know, on the topic of, you know, artists not producing properly and why they can't get work in the mainstream because of that same problem. And I'm sorry, I'm the first one to tell you, yes, the mainstream does need to uh, reevaluate itself. But at the same token, though, if you're not doing professional quality work of at least a page and a half a day, you're not making them money. You know, you can't make a, a monthly book doing that. So, you know, but don't make excuses about it and blame it on your style. You know, just accept it and say, okay, I'm just a little slow for professional work right now. Or speed up. Practice and speed up. You know, make it count for what you're doing. Don't blame it off on the style. I mean, I've never heard of that before. And there's rare, there's rare topic points that I haven't seen yet, but that one was a funny one to me because, I mean, it's just really you get you guys are taking it upon yourselves to say that, you know, you can't draw fast because you over render this stuff. I'm sorry if somebody puts a, a paycheck on the line and says for me to get it done in a week, I'm going to get it done in a week. If they say that if they say the same thing of, you know, do four pages a month, I'm going to do four pages a month. If they say do 20 pages a month, I'm going to do 20 pages a month. I'll make it happen because that's what I do and that's what's required of the project. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but still. I found that interesting, you know. I'm not trying to rant about it or anything. I just found it really strange that someone would actually come up and blame their style and try to blame it off on their detail because I'm sorry, but if you if you check out old school stuff like Joe Kubert and those type of old school, old guard artists, they all had to draw pretty much photorealism. I mean, you know, it wasn't as in-depth and rich as it is today, obviously, unless you were had a painting style, you know, um, a, a Rockwell-type uh, painted style or illustrative style. But don't call yourself a comic illustrator and blame it on the illustration that you're dragging. You know, that's just ridiculous. Oh, I can't do 20 pages a month because of the fact that I'm an illustrator, not a comic artist. Well, guess what? You're not going to be drawing comics. Well, why aren't you going to hire me? That's discrimination. No, you said yourself you're not a comic artist. You're an illustrator. So <laughs> you're shooting yourself in the foot with that one, so you better watch it. It's going to bite you back. But whatever. Um, you know, I tell students all the time, it's just one of those things. You know, you have to 
get in gear and uh, move forward with what you have because if you don't, you're going to be sitting there waiting for perfection. And in a productive materialistic world like we live in, perfection over production doesn't exist. It's the opposite. Don't worry about being perfect. Don't worry about being spot on every time. Just worry about getting the artwork done where it'll pass an editor to get you the job you need to get into where you're at. Because, I mean, it's a money medium, plain and simple. And if you're not producing in a, in a professional manner, then you're not a professional. So, you have to do the work. I see people all the time tell me, you know, way, hey, you, you know, why? How do you draw so so much so often? And it's just, hey, whatever. I just get in there and do the work. Just get in there and do the work. It may not be perfect, but I guarantee it's done. Big difference. So. But anyway, what do I know? This is coming along really cool. Now, this being two cards, I'm talking and taking my time here for one thing. Um, this part of it being two cards is being very, very different from uh, my normal 20-minute session. <laughs> It's kicking out a little bit more time uh, requirement. <clears throat> but he's starting to come together. He, he's pulling it out here. Um, it's starting to come together. So just going to keep working at it and uh, finish this side up. And like I said, I'm probably going to have to do a different session later on or finish this up off camera so that I can actually get it done for you guys on this upper part. Or I could just cut these two cards loose and call it a day. But um, I, I don't want to do that. I think it's going to be a lot better piece if I uh, finish it out. So. Anyway, I also need to detail his knuckles because I don't like the way those fingers are bland like that. Um... I'm going to have to go in and put those, put some details in there anyway. I wanted to leave them open like the animated version, like I said, but I want to make sure that he comes off solid. So I'm going to go ahead and detail out those fingers here shortly. Let's see if we can get that to buckle a little bit. That way that cape comes off a little more. <clears throat> so, um, what do you guys want to see for tomorrow? I don't know if I'm going to do a giveaway tomorrow or not. Um, this Friday or not because of the fact that like I said I was doing this particular piece and I want to catch up on some more stuff that I'm doing but <clears throat> I, I don't know um, if you guys want to see a giveaway tomorrow I, I'm game to do that but uh, you know we're gonna have to share it and pass it around and make sure plenty of people get on because I don't want to give it to the same three people you know what I mean so uh, let me know about that I noticed everything's slowing down a little bit because of the cards. Um, everybody's at cons and stuff and whatever, and I understand and respect that. Everybody's got to do their thing and be at work. And I, uh, <clears throat> I just want to make sure you guys are still digging these because if you're not, like I said, if you're not, then it may be time to pull the plug on the old card set. I'd hate to do that this soon, but maybe, you know, we're a couple of dozen in here. We got, I, I think I'm at, like I said, 135 or 136, whatever I said earlier. Um, 
There's so many of them. <laughs> I showed you guys a little bit of the inking yesterday. Some of the cards that I got out of the way. Um, I still have Kevin's um, Electra, and I still have Tom's Ultraman sitting here on the board. I'm about halfway done with these, and I need to finish them up because I've moved into the final stages. But like I said, this week I wanted to knock out all the extra stuff that I had going on and get it finished up and stick with the projects that I have going right now. But then I'm going to be moving um, – away from freelance for a little while so that I can do my own books and get them out for you guys. <clears throat> That's been a big thing for me. I wanted to free myself up for that, so that has been a big one. And I haven't dropped any projects I was working on. I just picked up, I just stopped um, picking up new stuff is what I did. So if it's already on the schedule, you're safe. Um, new stuff, maybe, maybe not. I'll be picking up select projects as I go along, but that's uh, that's it. Because once I release uh, Catman number four, Catman Evolution number four, and get into these other couple of books that I've got going on, I'm going to be knocking them out pretty quick. Because crazy enough, I will be doing four titles, four titles myself. And that's a month. So. <laughs> Need to cut that a little higher so it looks like he has the top of his nugget. And uh, get my big fingers out of the way here. Yeah, that's coming off all right. Now, this being the underside of this bandage right here, I'm going to go in here and kind of tweak that out a little bit. There's two strands here. One goes down here. Like that. And this one goes down right around under here. <clears throat> Popping in age spots, decrepit hands. That way they pop off a little more. And this wide divide on his knuckles right here, I need to put that underline in for this finger. That's where that came from. Part of that distance problem. There we go. I'll line that out, but I didn't shade it in. So... Got to show where the rest of those fingers are. There we go. That opened it up quite a bit. I'm going to put this right here. Go ahead and shade that in. So we can see the back of that hand. 
There we go. Now, um, I'm going to do this hand too, but like you said, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shade over this side. I'm going to shade in these, and then I'm going to detail the, the uh, bandages a little more, and then I'm going to call it a day because I want to knock these out. And like I said, I'll finish this up off camera so that I can uh, show you guys the rest of it with the top half. And I'll leave that for a surprise for everybody to check out. I might record it um, later or something. I don't know yet. I don't know if I'll re-record and do one later for this one or not. I'll have to see what, uh, what my evening timeline looks like. But, uh, yeah. I will finish it up and I will post it either way. Because I'm excited about this one and I want to see this guy light up up here. I might even throw down a late night session and call it part duh. Because <laughs> by that time I'll be tired. So I can go in that way. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. See, this is part of doing this live. I forgot about this part on his neck. He's a creepy gangly guy. There we go. Drawing the rest of that throat there. Connect it up because I changed it up for the bandages so I didn't draw over them because um, I didn't want to lose that piece due to blacking it out. Now I got to put in the squiggles. For the age spots. Now I know a lot of guys that would have gone in and hashed this up to no end. But I'm going to put in a little detail. But I don't want to go break this down to where it doesn't look like him anymore. Because that's one of those things. you know. I don't want him to come off looking like evil Ernie's great uncle or something weird. You know. Um. It's one of those things people like to do is they like to over-render this stuff. And that's what I was talking about before. You know, don't go in and over-render the way you can't recognize what the character is or who the character is. Because then you have a problem. It doesn't look the same. <laughs> it's because he's not anymore. Put in a couple more age spots on him here. Looking over to make sure I'm on camera with you guys. And he's all bandaged up, so we won't add in anything creepy like nurples. That would be weird. Um, because he's already going to have them up there on the big guy. That's just kind of awkward. Mm. Hashtag mummy nurples. There you go. It's my birthday tomorrow. I went there. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm going to pop in a couple of these shadows here to kind of break this up a little bit. Like this right here. Because these things are like millions of years old according to what you know, um, the look of it goes for, and he always said, you know, through the millennia, so, wasn't through the ages, it was through the millennia, it's like, dude's been around a while, darken these up a little bit, and then like I said, I'm going to get to the other side of that shroud, so, <clears throat>
this is coming off a little more like um, what I do for the comics. It's a little fuller in the detail. Which is really cool, actually. It's a lot of fun. Sorry, I got sidetracked with this shadow here for this bandage. I want to pop it out just a little. Kind of old school with this thing. Where it doesn't really shadow it out, but it shows, you know, kind of a... Kind of a tint, you know. Um, that's what I want to do here. Now I'll get back to this other side. And if you ever want to know how to make um, folds and wrinkles and all that, just cut your stuff, make your folds extra wide, and then cut them in half with a shade line. That's very easy to do, very, very easy to do. Like this one right here will come across right here and separate from the sleeve. Because that's where the fold in the elbow goes. And it'll put... A little bit of another wrinkle right there and then you just come back off the back side like that About got it. So, and when you do flesh and versus uh, when you do flesh versus the fabric textures, make sure that you do them differently. Um, <clears throat> if you do your if you do fine eyed uh, fine line or finite shading on the uh, flesh do the opposite and make them broad strokes on the um, fabric. If you do them on the, the flesh or on the, uh, vice versa on the fabric, then make sure you do broad strokes on the flesh, you know, because that way it'll uh, show up a little bit different because if you don't, it's going to make it all look the same weight and it's going to mess it up. And it's also going to give it the same texture and it'll make it look weird. Like right on the bottom of Mummer's nose, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put some really broad strokes here, just one or two right there across just to lighten it up just a little bit to where it pops off the end of his nose and it's like hey you can see his nose and right here under his eye under his eyelids because these are his eyelids right here and that's the bridge or brow I'm gonna go right here on his eyelids and right down here normally I would do some cross hatching or something like that some feathering or whatnot, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put it over here on this cheekbone and right back here on the jaw, just a little. <clears throat> and I'm going to leave that alone. Um, and instead of giving him a lip, I'm going to give him a black ridge right here to show that overbite. And I think we've got it about done. I don't want to mess with it too much more, and I'll just do the rest of it later in another session for you guys to see the big mum raw up top. <clears throat> so, hey, Lewis, thanks for making it, man. So, checking everything over here to make sure I did enough. Um, I see a little bit of a high point right here. Making sure my lid's sticking out.
and down over here I want to darken this side up just a little bit this tends to make it look like it has a ripple to it a little more um, than most places but you don't want to overdo it like I said you want to leave it open and just shade in the darkest points so that way it comes across and there we have it we have the mummy form of Mumra so hope you guys dig it uh, this one has taken about an hour because like I said I talked a lot through it and I really really detailed this thing out but <clears throat> I mean this is like right there with the comic book uh, the comic art that I do as far as what I would actually render out so um, and like I said with me talking it's just blowing it out of the water as far as uh, getting everything taken care of because it, it slows down whenever I do all the talking and I'm just kind of engulfed in the, the process but yeah I'll knock it out to where we have the rest of this one here later like I said I'll probably do another session at least I'll post the finished piece I will finish it and post it up for you guys so for now we're going to consider this part of the set Mumra is all but uh, done here with this mummy piece and uh, like I said I'll do the uh, transformation piece up next so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me I know it's been a long this is a long one here um, I look forward to hanging out with you further uh, to see where this goes and uh, talk to you soon